10 years of foreign-sponsored war in Syria has left more than 380,000 people dead. The UN says nearly 12,000 children have been killed or wounded so far. More than half of Syria's pre-war population of 22 million has fled their homes. Syria is in dire need of help, but surely the West has so far offered nothing but destruction and death to Syrians. The US has targeted Syria with economic sanctions that have severely hit the war-torn country's economy by prohibiting foreign companies from trading with Damascus. Meanwhile, the US and European countries had banned export and investment in Syria as well as transactions involving oil and hydrocarbon products. Also, smuggling of strategic Syrian resources is another tactic used to put pressure on the government of President Bashar Assad, a move that has caused more instability. Furthermore, over the past years, the US has been leading a military coalition conducting airstrikes against purported targets of the Daesh Takfiri terrorist group inside Syria without any authorization from the Damascus government or a UN mandate. However, numerous reports and official accounts have revealed the US and Israel's involvement in the relocation of Daesh's elements across Syria and shipment of supplies to them. One example is the US aid operation into Idlib. The Syrian Foreign Minister Faisal Maqdad has said the US push to renew a cross-border aid operation into Syria's Idlib is aimed at supplying terrorist groups and prolonging the war. Meanwhile, Iran has once again underlined the need for a peaceful solution to the Syrian crisis. We reiterate once more that the Syrian crisis must be settled peacefully and in accordance with principles of international law, particularly respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity of states, non-intervention and non-interference in their internal or external affairs, and peaceful settlement of international disputes. Majid Tahtravanchi said the current situation in Syria is the result of foreign intervention as well as Israeli aggression. He warned that these issues can negatively impact regional stability and global peace and security. Damascus is determined to restore its sovereignty over the country's entire expanse. The Assad government has proved effective as Syrians continue to recapture key areas from remnants of the Daesh Takfir terrorist group and other foreign-backed terrorist factions across the country. Nevertheless, the presence of U.S. and European forces, in addition to Turkish troops, has slowed down its advances. And President Assad has been on the forefront of the struggle against U.S. imperialism in the region. For many years, the U.S. has sought to dislocate, dismember, destabilize the Syrian nation. We saw this in 2011 through 2015, 2016, some of the roughest years of the U.S. funding Western-backed terrorists, Wahhabis trained and armed and funded by Israel, Saudi Arabia, the United Kingdom, the United States. Thousands of Syrians have died since the outbreak of the Western-backed war in 2011 to topple President Bashar Assad. After failing to oust the Syrian government through proxies and direct involvement, the US government stepped up its economic war on Syria by imposing crippling sanctions. Acting Assistant Secretary of State for Near East Affairs, Joy Hood, warned countries in West Asia against restoring ties with Syria. He also warned the prospect of sanctions against countries that normalize relations with Syria and do business with Damascus. Hood noted, that the only way to achieve stability in Syria is through a political process. He also stated that Washington is committed to working with allies, partners and the UN to ensure that a durable political solution remains within reach. That's why Washington and its allies are inside Syria without the invitation of the Damascus government or a UN mandate. One of the biggest techniques of US imperialism is to create chaos and destabilization in a country that is anti-imperialist, that is against the empire, that defends its people. They create chaos there, and then they blame that chaos and destabilization on the policies of that government. Syria's Foreign Minister Faisal Maqdad called Washington's policy pure hypocrisy, citing wide-ranging U.S. sanctions against the war-torn Arab country. Maqdad further accused Western countries of killing Syrian people with their sanctions. 
like it or not, Washington and its allies have failed to oust Bashar Assad and his government is supported by the Syrian people. The presence of foreign forces in Syria is illegal and must end, as it is the root of instability in the country.